that Georgia Bulldogs are bowl eligible and hope to put the finishing touches on the regular season by feasting on in-state rival Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets have secured a spot in the ACC championship game and hope to break a five-game losing streak to Georgia. Today is the ultimate battle between the hedges. It's the Home Depot SEC on CBS, Georgia Tech and Georgia. It is a perfect late November day in Athens, Georgia. Georgia's seniors say their farewells to Sanford Stadium today, and this group has never lost to Georgia Tech. But the 15th ranked Yellow Jackets plan to spoil the Bulldogs day. Big hello, everyone. Craig Bowler, Jack. So glad you could join us this afternoon. 60 miles separates Georgia Tech and Georgia, and each and every year, this rivalry grows more and more intense. Growing up here in Georgia, you know, um, you get kind of get an idea, you know, of how big of a rivalry it is, but you don't really understand till you get here, you know, to Tech, you know, and it's kind of like a genuine, like dislike for the other team. It's Georgia Tech. I mean, we can't stand each other. It's the biggest thing in Georgia. It, it really sets the tone for bragging rights all year round. And for the past four years, you know, we haven't been able to get away from the fact that, you know, we lose to these guys. I don't want to be the senior class that, that couldn't beat Tech. Uh, that's, that's for certain. This is like the Super Bowl, you know, for both teams. Steve Burline, you played at Notre Dame. My friend, you know all about rivalries. Well, Craig, one thing I do know about rivalries is there, there's going to be a lot of emotion flowing out there on both sides of the ball. Both these teams are going to be fired up, but it's going to be the team that can keep their emotions in check and focus the best today that's going to win the ball game. Let's talk about Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets will play for the ACC Championship next week in Jacksonville. They have a dynamic, electrifying player at wide receiver Calvin Johnson. Well, if you don't know who Calvin Johnson is, you've been sleeping on college football Saturday for the last two and a half years. This guy is six foot four, 235 pounds, runs a 4-3-40, and he is dynamite in a bottle. This guy is a guy NFL scouts are drooling about, and everybody on the Georgia defense, I guarantee you, Craig, today will know exactly where number 21 is on the football field. And a finalist for the Bolitnikoff Award. Now, how about Georgia? Up and down season, turnovers have hurt, drop passes have hurt. However, two weeks ago, Steve, they rallied and picked beat a very good Auburn team and really helped make their season. Well, it couldn't have come at a better time. Coming off a, a terrible loss to the Kentucky Wildcats the week before, Mike Rick's team was at an all-time low under his leadership. They'd never been that low, but they came out against Auburn. They played loose. They played free. They made interceptions. They made Auburn look terrible. They smacked them upside the head the whole day, and it was a very, very productive win for them, led by this freshman quarterback, Matthew Stafford, number seven, a guy who his coaches compared to ability-wise, Dan Marie, you know John Elway, but obviously this kid has a long way to go before he gets there, but he had his best game of the year against Auburn, and they're hoping to build on that today. Well, Georgia claims this is the 99th meeting between these two schools. The Bulldogs do not recognize two Georgia Tech wins during World War II. The Bulldogs have won five straight in this series, dating back to this series 1893. Temperature, perfect day. Two days after Thanksgiving, 70 degrees as we get ready to kick it away. And clear skies, the forecast here in Athens, Georgia. Georgia Tech 9 and 2. They come off a win over Duke last week by 28. Georgia 7 and 4. Beat Auburn as we talked two weeks ago, 37 to 15. The Georgia Tech won the toss and they chose to receive. The Yellow Jackets have not won since 2000. It was here in Athens by a final of 27 to 15. Georgia Tech from the ACC and Georgia from the SEC. Andy Bailey will kick away. Jamal Evans awaits. 92,000 strong on hand as we get ready to go. Between the hedges, Georgia and Georgia Tech. Short kick. 
Evans on the run at the 10. 25 up the middle of the 30. Breaks on his feet to the 41-yard line. Knocked down by Asher Allen as we look at our Applebee's starting lineups. And for Georgia Tech, the quarterback in his senior season is Reggie Ball. 20 touchdown throws. That leads the ACC. Up front to protect is Gardner and Rose. To Manello, McManus, and Rado. Backs and receivers, keep your eye on 21. Calvin Johnson, 13 touchdowns. Ranked number three in the NCAA. Great field position to start this drive from the 41. Ball goes deep. First throw of the game. Hangs up. And nearly intercepted inside the 10-yard line. Trey Battle, the cover man. Well, Georgia Tech did not waste any time trying to get the ball to that man right there. Calvin Johnson, they come out right away. And that ball is in the air a long time from Reggie Ball to Calvin Johnson. And perfect coverage by the Georgia secondary. Super job. Getting back there by Paul Oliver and Keelan Johnson making a good play on that ball, not letting Georgia Tech get that explosion out of Calvin Johnson on the first play of the game. Two wide receivers near side. Calvin Johnson, ball steps up and throws. It's caught. Chris Dunlap, and Dunlap is driven back. Back at the 48-yard line. Let's set that Georgia defense for you this afternoon. Led by Charles Johnson, Dell Dixon, Ray Gant, and Quentin Moses, who has 24 career sacks. Good linebacking court, Tony Taylor. Out of Watkinsville, Georgia, and the secondary of Evans, Johnson, Battle, and Oliver. Third down and three. Four wide receivers set as ball. Will throw an audible, and this crowd is crazy. They're going to keep it on the ground, stacked up, and on second effort, the shard choice is close, but will be short. They'll place him at the 49-yard line, and that will bring up fourth down and two. Well, Reggie Ball saw something there that he obviously had prepared for, thought he had prepared for, made the check to Shark Choice, but George's defense, give them credit, they're coming out here feeding on the emotion of senior day, the emotion of this crowd, and they shut him down cold on that third down run, didn't pick up a yard. Mikey Henderson back to receive the kick from Durant Brooks, averaging 45 yards a kick. Gets a leg into a high hanger. Fair catch at the nine yard line. And for Georgia, Matthew Stafford, the freshman, a true freshman from Dallas, Texas. 12 interceptions on the season, five touchdowns up front. Shackelford, Velasco, Jones, Adams, and Inman will protect their young quarterback. Craig Lumpkin, 105 yards and a touchdown two weeks ago against Auburn is the tailback. A.J. Bryant, Mohamed Massaqua, your wideouts. Keep an eye on this Tech defense. Steve, as you know, they will blitz 75% of the time, and they really want to play games with this freshman, Matthew Stafford. Keeper. Trickery, first play out of the gate. What a great play fake by Stafford to the 29-yard line. You know, Craig, you said a great play fake. I was sitting there watching Lumpkin myself. I did not know that Matthew Stafford has the ball. You'll see that everything's going to be flowing this way, and Matthew Stafford makes the fake and keeps it around the right side. Watch the pursuit by Georgia Tech. None of them think that Matt Stafford has the ball. He's 15 yards up the field before they realize that this big number seven is coming around the corner with the football. One way to calm the blitz. There's a lot of ways you can calm the blitz, but right there was a good start, I'll tell you that. A 20-yard game by Stafford and Georgia with a first down to the 29-yard line. Yellow Jackets show blitz, and a trip taken down is Lumpkin by the middle linebacker, Philip Weaver. At Georgia Tech defensively, Robertson, Richard, and Hawaii and Oliver. They've combined for 29 sacks as Tech defense. Hall, Wheeler, and Guyton, your linebackers, and the secondary, Roberson, Lewis, Jones, and Kenny Scott. Yeah, 29 sacks 
this blitzing Georgia Tech defense. Second down and eight after a pickup of two, and Stafford will line up in the shotgun. Steps and throws, a one-hopper incomplete to Massaqua, and let's go above the line. Well, for the Georgia offense, it starts with Matthew Stafford right there. Don't give it away, Matthew Stafford. Turnovers have plagued this team all year. He's got to play smart if this team wants to have a chance to win. They're off to a good start. Let's see if they can build on it. For Georgia Tech, on defense, they got to get to Stafford physically, mentally, and get to him early. Try and put pressure on this true freshman. Let's see if he can hold up under the immense pressure of this great rivalry. Third down and eight. Stafford changing the plays. Steps up. Same pass. That was a hop and a skip miss on second down. Close to a first down is Massaqua. And that one was delivered with a little bit more confidence. Third and eight, a situation where the Georgia Bulldogs coaching staff offensively, Patrick Nixon, Mike Rick, they don't want to see Matthew Stafford in third and long very often, but right there he threw a strike. He stood strong in the pocket, made the right decision, the right read, saw the one-on-one -on -one coverage on Massaqua, and threw a good pass out there for their second conversion today. Three different quarterbacks early on this season for Georgia. Joe Cox got a try, Joe Tarasinski, the senior, and they finally settled on the freshman Matthew Stafford. On first down, will throw, has a gun for an arm and overthrows A.J. Bryant. Steve, you mentioned about some of the woes that Georgia has gone through this season. 29 turnovers committed on the year and a number of drop passes. Yeah, absolutely last as far as the turnovers are concerned in the SEC. A lot of drop passes. Coaches say three to four a game. But the bottom line is they have not protected the football. This is their most turnovers in the season since 1996, and there's still games to play. Mark Rick in his sixth season on the sideline looking at second down and ten. Rick, the two-time SEC Coach of the Year. And the pitch. Lumpkin spreads out that Tech defense and is swarmed down by a number of Yellow Jackets at the 45 after he picks up five. Lumpkin, you like any back, Steve, who can go nearly five and a half yards per carry. And that is the, that is, uh, the word on Craig Lumpkin. And he was so key in their win against Auburn a couple weeks back. He was able to run the ball, ran for over 100 yards against an Auburn defense that coming into the season was pretty darn good against the run. They've struggled this year, but when Lumpkin plays like that, it takes a lot of pressure off of Matthew Stafford and allows him to stay in good, desirable situations. Makes his job a little bit easier. Seventh play of this drive. Third down and four, shotgun, Stafford. Quick step, throws in the seam. It's caught complete by the tight end, Martrez Milner. It's rare that a tight end is your favorite target. That's the 25th catch by Milner this season. Yeah, Milner's the leader. He's on the left side. He's, he's going to push up into a straight out pattern. But look at the timing by Matthew Stafford. That ball is in the air before he comes out of the break. Good, quick decision. And Martrez Miller, a, a guy who's had his problems with drop balls this year, in fact, got in the doghouse of Coach Callaway and Coach Rick. Today makes the first big catch of the day for himself and moves the chains again for the third time today. First down, Georgia. Heading on three and a half minutes on this drive. A first down. Ooh, not much as Tech slams the lanes. Adam Oliver got a good lick on Lumpkin. That may have left a lump. I had to say that once, <laughs> just once today. That's okay, man. I tell you, Lumpkin is going to be a key today for the Georgia Bulldogs because this, this Georgia Tech defense, they do a lot. You talk about the blitzing and how much trouble it causes the quarterback, but the running defense, they only give up about 89 yards a game rushing the football. And in order for Georgia to be successful, we've said Lumpkin has to play well. They have to run the ball. You can't expect this freshman to be converting third and longs all day long. Second down and 10 under nine minutes to play in a very quick pace first quarter here in Athens. Lumpkin. Tries to stretch that Georgia Tech defense as he rumbles inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. Again, Adam Oliver from the defensive end spot with the tackle, but a flag is down. Ooh, not a good, not the good kind. Personal foul. Jack Childress, our referee today.
At the end of the down, dead ball, personal foul, 72 offense. That's a 15 yard penalty. It is now third down. Daniel Inman, the right tackle. You can take CBS Sports Line with you wherever you go on your internet enabled phone, access breaking news and in depth stats, get expert video, live scoreboards, and even manage your fantasy team. Click on mobile at CBSSportsLine.com. You know, Craig, that's one of those penalties that could be the emotions of senior day, the emotions of the rivalry. You've got a great drive going right there. You pick up a good four yard gain on second down, and all of a sudden, after the play, Daniel Lehman comes in. He's a senior. He cleans up on somebody a little bit late. Now they're looking at third and 20. From the shotgun, over the middle, wide open, right on the button is Massaqua. Still on his feet and inside the 40, so he got the penalty back at the 38-yard line. And now G Georgia, with the ball being spotted back now at the 43, actually, there's no field goal option here for Georgia. They've got the choice of maybe trying to go for it, but third, fourth and 10, they'll punt it, try and pin Georgia Tech back inside. 20 yard line try and play the field position game here Gordon Ely Kelso will punt Andrew Smith number 83 at his own 10 yard line for Georgia Tech low snap little pooch punt high high hanger and fair catch at the 16 yard line a 27-yard kick. Good touch on that pooch. In Athens, Georgia Tech in Georgia. Scoreless on CBS. You know, when, when you say LT, I always have flashbacks to Lawrence Taylor, man. No. That, he, 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 that, that name was signified or synonymous with pain for me in the NFL <laughs> for a lot of years. A lot of quarterbacks. That's so, why, is that why you walk the way you do? That's why I walk the way I do. Looking over my shoulder every step. Stafford and the Bulldogs start at the 17-yard line. They will try to establish the run. Lumpkin, maybe a yard, and he was hit right on the numbers by Wheeler, Philip Weaver, Weaver, the middle linebacker. And that was that was a solid hit, as you said. I mean, that was a. Uh, I heard that all the way up here. Almost felt it a little bit. Came down hard on Lumpkin and stopped him for a pickup of only one. Wheeler's active. Eight sacks. And he can thank the blitz package of this Georgia defense. Second down and nine, 440 to play in the quarter. Stafford stands in the shotgun. Throws a dart far sideline, caught, nearly dropped, and now they're going to say incomplete. Mario Raley had that ball in his hands. It came out, and then as he hit the ground, came out. And it might not look like much. It was only going to be about a six or seven yard gain, but this is what has plagued the Georgia offense all year long. Drop ball. The ball could not have been thrown any better by Matthew Stafford out there in the flat. He's going to catch that ball, turn up, and get it to be about a third and two situation. Much more desirable for Neil Calloway, Mike Rick, because they know Matthew Stafford, now that you have the run option, the pass option, now he's looking at third and nine, backed up. They're stressing about this right now, I guarantee you. Georgia two of three on third down conversion. Stafford fills the blitz, that sets up a screen. Watch out, first down, 32-yard line. Lumpkin doing his thing. And Matthew Stafford took a shot right in the chops, but they had the right play called right here. They came with the blitz. Jamal Lewis off the slot right here. Coming, boom, up the field. He's going to get a clean shot on Matthew Stafford right in the mouth. Look at that, boom. Stafford lets go of it at the last minute, but what a great call right into the blitz. They let the blitz come by. Matthew Stafford gives a little bit of ground, buys some time. Good, accurate throw over the top, and there's nobody left on that side of the field because they were all blitzing. Perfect call. 16-yard pass play, first down, Georgia at their own 34-yard line. Back to the ground. Lumpkin wrapped up. He'll lose a yard, maybe two. Back to the 32-yard line. Daryl Richard, Adam Oliver teaming up on that front line to knock down Lumpkin. And this is a very good Georgia Tech defense. The only team that really made them look bad this year was the, the Clemson team. And that was a, an aberration, total aberration for that team this year. We got a hurt player in the field right now. That's but, big Ken Shackelford, yeah. the senior left tackle, 6'5", 325. Well, look at those knees. He's got them braced up. 
And he's hobbling right now. And that would move if if Shackford needs to come out for an extended period. That would move Fernando Velasco, their starting left guard, out to the left tackle position. And they'll bring in number 76, Seth Watts, in Velasco's place. So little little shifts like that really do play a role in the course of a game. When players go down, they've got to figure out. Actually, they've got Michael Turner has come in 61 at the left tackle spot on second down and 11. And again. Stafford, the freshman, shotgun. Lumpkin is ridden down. That ball is Ball's on out. the deck. It was loose. And Georgia recovers. And you're going to see that ball definitely did come out. Lumpkin coming this way right at you. Not that ball's popping out. It was a great job coming in from the side. I believe it was Daryl Robertson that got his hands on the ball and popped that ball out of the number 90 right there. Yeah, did a good job stripping that ball. It is free. Looks like Georgia Tech might have had the advantage of getting that ball underneath that pile, but somehow the Bulldogs come up with it. Turnovers again, very fortunate they didn't lose the ball right there. That was nearly the 30th turnover committed by Georgia. They have the football on third down and eight. As we head to two and a half minutes left in the play clock was going down the wire and Stafford forced to call a timeout. Georgia Tech and Georgia scoreless. We'll be back. Tech and Georgia, 231 to play in the opening quarter. Scoreless between these two old rivals. And Steve Berline, third down and eight for Matthew Stafford. Yeah, we're setting, we're looking at third and eight. Now they've had several third longs today, but Georgia's fortunate to be able to come out of it. They're three of four on third down conversions today. So give credit to Matthew Stafford and his preparation. The coach is preparing him. He's making good, smart decisions and throwing the ball very well. Stafford goes under center. Now back shotgun. Throws. And it's complete. Oh, Milner puts the ball up to signify, yes, sir, I got the catch. And that's a great catch by Martrez Milner right there. You're going to see big old body. He's 6'4", 255, and a senior. He just pushes straight up the field, turns around, and gives Matthew Stafford his numbers. It's hard to get around that big body. And that ball is definitely caught. It got down there a little bit low, but it was definitely pulled in for a catch. Second catch for Milner, 22 yards on the day. Fifth first down by Georgia. And they're going to review it just to make sure. The previous play is under review. Let's see if there's a bobble. I don't know if one hand is underneath that ball at that angle. Difficult. And again, as you mentioned, indisputable evidence has to uh, occur for that for that play to be turned. Yeah, it, it's a tough job. These guys up in the, the replay booth, I went in there earlier before the game and saw exactly how the process works. Bob Patrick is the replay official. He's got the final say today on those calls. He's with the SEC, and they've got a lot of experience. But if you can't see it clearly, they can't overturn it, in my opinion. And here's Jack Childress. After further review, the call on the field is confirmed. It is a catch and a first down. I don't know if that's actually confirmed. It just was not disputed. It was not clearly refuted. So uh, it confirms it as a catch in the stat book. We'll never know if it was actually a catch or not. But for our, all intents and purposes, it was a catch. So the officials, uh, what that does, Steve, confirms the call on the field. And Milner gets uh, the pickup as Lumpkin goes right up the middle into Tech territory now at the 49-yard line. Stafford, by the way, Steve, you're, old, you're an old quarterback. He's doing nothing in this big rivalry game to get him into early trouble. He, he set up the screen nice early. He's 5 of 8 in this opening quarter for 56 yards. And when you watch film, you see every game, until the Auburn game two weeks ago, you saw throws every game where you were kind of like, oh, what is he doing? What's he thinking? But you haven't seen any of those throws today or against Auburn a couple weeks ago. That's progress. 
Lumpkin is cut down. Nice tackle by K. Michael Hall, one of the outside linebackers, and we're heading to one minute left in this first quarter. Both these teams can score. Georgia averaging 25 and a half points a ball game, and Georgia Tech nearly 27 so far. Both defenses are pitching a shutout. No doubt. Again, there is so much going back to this rival. You can throw everything out the window. As you know, Craig, these rivalry games, the strangest things happen. And both teams are obviously very emotional right now. They've settled into the game plan now. And now we're going to start seeing the coaches are getting a chance to figure out what the other team's philosophy is going to be. They should have a better idea how to attack it. Ninth play of this drive, and down goes Stanford. That is the first sack allowed by that front line of Georgia over the last two ball games. Only the 14th sack of the season for the Georgia front line. They've only given up 14 now, but that was a big one right there. Changes field position, moved the ball back to the 43-yard line, a loss of about 10 yards on that play. Final second, ticking off here in Athens. That ends the first quarter. Georgia Tech and Georgia scoreless. The Home Depot SEC on CBS continues after this message and a word from your local station. Big welcome back to Athens, Georgia. Georgia Tech, Georgia scoreless early seconds here of the second quarter. Craig Bullerjack, Steve Verline, glad you're along with us today. Georgia in that opening quarter dominated time of possession, and they also held Calvin Johnson to just one pass attempt from Reggie Ball. Only one ball attempted in his right. direction. Reggie Ball's only completed one pass for seven yards. Georgia looks very comfortable offensively. They're converting third downs. Nothing on the scoreboard yet, but they're moving the ball. They're running it well. Matthew Stafford has made good decisions. They've looked like the better prepared team to play today to this point. Ball rolls out of the pocket. Watch out. Backside. Blind sack. I don't know if he saw Brian Evans coming or not, but Evans unloads. I'll tell you what, what one thing you do not do if you're a quarterback, this is a dash roll out. It's a, you sell them on the drop back initially, then you spin out of there, and the offensive line is setting up to protect you, but you can't pull up and hold the football. You're going to get your head ripped off. He almost got his head ripped off by Brian Evans, number three, coming across. He ducked, felt it at the right time, but Reggie Ball has played enough to know that if you roll out like that and you hold that ball for very long, you're running a severe health risk. You're going to get hit and hit hard, probably. A loss of nine on the sack is Ball. Sets up in the shotgun, throws far sideline. It's caught. Calvin Johnson makes his first grab of the day. Tim, as you know, Oklahoma wins. Sooners play Nebraska for the Big 12 title. Texas has been uh, was shot two weeks in a row. Third down. along the sideline James Johnson was just leveled by Trey Battle you know what Craig this was really made by Trey Battle James Johnson should have caught this ball you'll see he gets what's called alligator arms he knew Trey Battle was coming he didn't want to stretch out and catch that football I'm not knocking him because I don't think I would have wanted to catch that football with Trey Battle coming over me either but that ball should have been caught a receiver on the outside has to go up for that football and pull it in. It was delivered right on the money by Reggie Ball. Durant Brooks will punt. Mikey Henderson at his own 25-yard line. Brooks, good punt. Henderson pedals back, takes it at the 14-yard line. Stop and go, and how about that special team punt coverage? Back at the 14-yard line, Michael Johnson with the tackle. A 51-yard punt. Let's go, Let's go, Let's go, Time to take a look at our SEC moment presented by Sonic. Let's take it back to 1997. Bulldog quarterback Mike Bobo threw four touchdown passes, including a nine-yarder to Corey Allen. Eight seconds on the clock as Georgia posted a wild 27-24 win over Georgia Tech. Here in Athens today, scoreless with 13-27 to play in the opening half. Georgia has owned possession time over 11 minutes 
so far, Steve Berline. Only five and a half for Georgia Tech. Yeah, Georgia Tech is only one of five now on third down conversions. Georgia's defense is really kind of confusing them and keeping the ball out of Calvin Johnson's hands very well so far. This drive starting at the 14 yard line. Fumble on the snap. Stafford trying to dig it out. And let's see who came up with it. Georgia Tech football. Oh. oh, what a break. And there is one of those turnovers that has bitten Georgia all season long. Nick, jo Nick Jones, the center, and Matthew Stafford, the quarterback. It's a bad exchange. You're going to see the ball never gets Matt, J Matt Stafford. The ball goes straight down to the ground. I don't know where it hit him. Hard to tell, but you got to believe it's the it's the rook. It's a freshman's mistake. Nick Jones is obviously a guy that's been there a while. He's a senior. He's been the quarter the the, the anchor of that offensive line for a lot of years. But there was a mix-up somehow. That's the second time the ball's been on the ground for the Georgia Bulldogs. You put it on the ground, you're going to pay the price, and they're going to pay the price right here. Let's see if they go to Calvin Johnson off the turnover up top. Through the hands, nearly an interception by Johnson, Keeling uh, Johnson, the free safety. And guess what? They did want Big 21. They did want him, and that was Reggie Ball had no doubt in his mind where he was going to go with this football. And that's that's the problem when you get a guy like Calvin Johnson out there. You feel like you got to throw it to him, and and I, you know, if that throw was up where on the money where it could have been, where only Calvin Johnson can catch it, you know, you can justify it. But Reggie Ball. He knows what he's got, number 21, and if there's any chance at all to get the ball to him, he's going to try and do it. Sometimes it costs him. Johnson, this time in the slot, they go right up the middle, and that's Deshard Choice, the tailback, off the right tackle, down to the 12-yard line. Jarvis Jackson, the middle linebacker with a stop. That brings up third down and nine. This Georgia defense ranked 13th overall in total defense, allowing just over 270 yards a ball game. And, and they were dominant against Auburn two weeks ago. Shut them down. Four interceptions to Brandon Cox. For Georgia Tech right now, Reggie Ball has to be very smart. They're already in really easy field goal range. He's got third and long. Don't force the ball here. If you got a shot, take it. But no, you've got three points. Pretty good shot at it at least. Three wide receivers near side. Ball. Out of the pocket, dances, still on his feet at the 15, dances now near side. He is in a world of trouble and is knocked down at the 18-yard line. Lost five yards on the play. And, you know, Georgia Tech does a lot of design runs for the quarterback. This does not look like a design run to me. It looks like he just makes up his mind. He wants to run. He's looking to throw the ball. Nobody's open in his mind. He doesn't even look up the field to throw it anywhere else. He's looking to run the ball in Georgia. Give them credit. Reggie Ball's a great athlete, but they were right with him the whole way. A loss of five yards. This will be a 35-yard attempt by Travis Bell. He's 8 of 13 on the season. High snap. The kick is away and splits the uprights from 35. So Georgia Tech turns that turnover of Georgia's into three. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. Welcome back, Athens, Georgia. Now, how about the average drive where they started today? Georgia Tech, their own 45. Georgia's been pinned deep at their own 16-yard line. They'll start this drive at the 26th. Play action. Stafford chased down the pocket, in trouble. Sidestep trouble. Now he throws, and it's incomplete. The numbers on Stafford, Steve, 5 of 9, 56 yards. And Georgia looking at second down and 10. The number that won't show up on that last play, Matt Stafford, his, his athletic ability. He's a big guy, 6'3", 228, got the big barrel chest, kind of like John Elway, and he moves pretty well. He avoided a couple of couple of opportunities at the sack and then made the smart decision throwing the ball away, keeping it from being a bad play. Second down, 10, 26-yard line, under 11 minutes to play, and a quick throw incomplete right off the numbers of Muhammad Massaquah. 
And that was a great job by Kenny Scott, number two, the cornerback. He's their matchup corner. If they do determine they want to match up someone on the opposing team's best receiver, he is their best cover guy. He did a really good job of reading Matthew Stafford and breaking on that ball. Joe Tanuda talking about how he's the guy that kind of you determine what you're going to do with number two, Kenny Scott. It's terms of what you're going to do coverage wise and that dictates the rest of the game plan. Georgia four of six on third down tries. They look at third down and ten shotgun Stafford. He'll roll out slingshots a throw near sideline. It hung up is it caught complete at the 48 yard line. The grab by Kenneth Harris. Oh baby that ball hung up for a week and he yeah. ran underneath it. It was not a thing of beauty Matthew Stafford would probably like to try and throw that again. Let's see if he gets those feet in that knee. That, boy that, you know that's hard to tell. It looked like his toes were down inside. Matthew Stafford knows that ball should have been delivered a little bit more with a little bit more oomph on it but it got there and was effective not even going to review it. Picks up 26 yards first down right up the middle big hole. It closes in a hurry, but how about the hole? Danny Ware saw it and rumbled to the 35-yard line. Well, that was like the Red Sea right there, literally the Red Sea. You watch how, how Ware just sees the hole. He doesn't have to make any move, just makes one little cut right there. Look at that. I mean, that's, that's 10 feet, 12 feet wide before he even has to even see anybody in the gold and white. He's doing a great super job up front by the Georgia offensive line. Really caught the right look they wanted, blocked it very well, made Danny Ware's job very easy. 129 of total yards so far in this first half by Georgia. Again, it's Danny Ware. And let's get an update on Pittsburgh, Louisville. Here's Tim, here's Tim Rando. Timmy? All right, Greg. Now, obviously, the Big East would have their designs on getting two teams into the BCS. Louisville's got to do their part to hang in there. Brian Brom, 42 yards to Mario Urudia. They now lead Pittsburgh 17 to 14. Already West Virginia's lost today. Back to you. Tim, thanks. Panthers, remember, off to such a big start under Dave Wanstead. They've lost four in a row to go to six and five. And they need to win today to be bowl eligible after that great start. Second down six. Stafford, shotgun. Where? Not much to the 30. I don't know. If, it looked like Stafford was trying to roll out and uh, throw a block for his tailback. I'll tell you what. I, that was Ma Matthew Stafford. If he if he doesn't have it pointed out to him by his coaches tomorrow when they watch the film, he's got to be careful diving at a defensive lineman's knees. At the end of that play, he, he tried to protect his running back from Dale Robertson. I I like the idea of getting down and getting dirty and helping out your teammates, but a quarterback diving at a defensive end's knees is going to tick off one of those defensive linemen. They're going to come after him pretty hard the next time. Seventh play of this drive. Georgia down by three looking a third down and five. And Georgia Tech's coming off the right side with one of their blitzes. Watch that play clock down to two down to one and whistles will stop play. Timeout. Timeout called by Georgia. Tech by three. Tim Brando in New York coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Spencer Tillman, Archie Manning, and I will get you caught up on all of today's action, including Oklahoma trying to get into the Big 12 championship game with a win over Oklahoma State, currently leading 20 to 14 right now. Back to Georgia Tech and Georgia. And there you see Matthew Stafford, the freshman quarterback. He did a good job seeing that Georgia Tech was in a blitz look, but one of the hardest things for a young quarterback to learn is how to be aware of your situation all the way around. That play clock was running down. Coach Rick, with the new rules that the head coach can call timeout, he saved his bacon right there by calling timeout before the flag went up. Third down and five for Stafford and the Bulldogs at the 30-yard line of Georgia Tech. And flags or at least whistles. Yeah, there's a flag far sideline. Stop that play. Jack Childress. We have a dead ball foul. False start. 72 of the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. It's still third down. Daniel Inman, the right tackle. You hate to talk bad about those old linemen. They work so hard. You only hear about them when they do something wrong, but 
He's made two two big mistakes so far. Three flags for Georgia. 30 yards in this opening half of play. Again from the shotgun. Stafford steps up in the pocket. Has man coverage in the end zone. Incomplete. He wanted Massaqua. And good coverage by Kenny Scott, but it shows you there, Steve, how strong Matthew Stafford's arm is. Yeah, but he'd like to have that one back again. I mean, that, that ball, he saw the pressure coming off his left side, did not trust his protection, even though Danny Ware did pick it up, the blitz coming off his left side. He kind of short-armed that ball out there. If he puts it out in front of him, you got to give your receiver a chance to go up and make that play. That ball was thrown five yards out of bounds. No one had a chance to catch that football. That's just experience, though. That's... That's Matthew Stafford not 100% trusting his protection on that play to allow himself to step up and throw that football. Andrew Smith back to receive the punt from Gordon Ely Kelso. Another pooch kick. High, high hanger. Takes a bounce inside the 15 and down at the 11-yard line. Oh, I, I don't know. Well... Not that I want to talk about it, at least. I don't know any time I've ever been on a chariot. <laughs> Georgia Tech will start this drive at the 11-yard line. Quick hitter right up the middle. Big yards as Choice found some pretty good choice running to the 17. Call it the 18-yard line. Knocked down by Johnson, the free safety. And I'll tell you what, that, that, that right there was close to being a, a big gasher for the Georgia Tech offense. And just, just tripped up by Johnson coming across there. Big play saving tackle. That would have been another 10, 15 yards easy if he wouldn't have sold out and made that trip. Fifth carry by choice. He averages 20 carries a game, about 96 yards a contest as we hit the seven and a half minute mark. Calvin Johnson at the bottom of the screen. Bouncing out of the tackle. Choice to the 20, short of the first down. They'll bring up third and short. And one, two, three, four. Five red helmets making contact with Deshard Choice. And so far, Georgia's defense has been able to hold Calvin Johnson. Big, big third down attempt right here for the Georgia Tech offense. They've got to do something to get their confidence up. You got Calvin Johnson in the slot. Third down and one. Quarterback keeper Reggie Ball. Throws that 195-pound body into the middle, and it's a first down, Georgia Tech. And look at look at how stifling this Georgia defense has been. All three of these guys, they played very well, the, the Georgia defense, last week against Auburn. Shut them down, but they're carrying it over into this game. Only one reception for Johnson. Tayshard Choice is only averaging about three yards a carry, and, and ball two of seven, 17 yards. None of them have done any damage. And you go back to last year. Give Willie Martinez, defensive coordinator, credit because Calvin Johnson only had two catches for 14 yards last year. Ball sets up and throws. A little stumble. Oh, reaching out off the fingertips. Calvin Johnson, had he not stumbled, that ball is in his hands. You called it exactly right. And this is what Reggie Ball and Patrick Nix and Chan Gailey looked for. One-on-one -on -one coverage. You had Paul Oliver. He had Calvin Johnson all over the field. Just got his feet tangled up a little bit. And that ball was off his fingertips. He sold out with that six foot four, 235 pound frame. Still almost made the catch. But if he doesn't trip like you said, Craig, that ball is still going down to the end zone for Georgia or for Georgia Tech. And I don't think anybody's going to run down 21. Only one reception, 10 yards in the first half for Calvin. There's a nice hole. Choice weaving, stumbling to the 40 yard line. Ball all over everywhere. He was on the coverage for Calvin Johnson that came up from the corner to make the stop. Yeah, and I'll tell you, if you got your corner on the outside matched up on Calvin Johnson, he's making the tackle on the short choice on a running play at the middle of the field. You got problems. You don't want your corner having to save the save the, the team with, a, with a, 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 a tackle 20 yards up the field. Good job of blocking by the bull, Mike Cox, the fullback getting to sharp choice up there in the line of scrimmage and another good solid pickup third first down of the afternoon for Georgia Tech they want more and the holes are beginning to pop open for Tech's ground game yeah, I, I think Patrick Nix 
the offensive coordinator for Georgia Tech now he's gone through his feeling them out period he says the first 10 plays or so a couple of drives you're trying to get a feel for how an opponent's going to play you then it gives you an idea how you're going to attack them they're moving the ball very well right now that's even interesting change this season for Georgia Tech Patrick Nix given the play calling duties from the head coach Chan Gailey yeah Chan Gailey said you know as a head coach these days the demands are too much it's hard to keep up with all the trends and the opponents during the offseason choice again bounces off one tackle and the Yellow Jackets on the move as they push the Bulldogs to the 39 yard line and they're running right at him right now but on that point we were talking about Craig Chan Gailey has always been the play caller hard for him to give him the duties and Patrick Nix obviously doing a great job right now that's just a straight up the middle called a wham play number 48 coming in from the right side left side Michael Matthews doing a good job of sealing off the right side and allowing the sharp choice to get up in there and Patrick Nix seems as though he's getting a feel for what George is doing this has been a choice drive for Georgia Tech ball sets up throws deep a little push into the end zone incomplete is the call Wow what a body contact James Johnson the intended receiver and Brian Evans gave him a bump or two you know I, I would have been asking for a, a little P.I. on this one myself Brian Evans he's right there but watch the contact he's got a little bit of contact before that ball gets there it looked like he was definitely hanging on his shoulder that flag could easily have been thrown right there it would have been it wasn't an obvious flagrant blatant P.I. but he definitely made contact with the right choice of Johnson before the ball got there first four drives how about that only 16 yards Tech has stacked up 50 on this drive alone ball fakes it into the middle little option and no gain at the 39 yard line good read by the middle linebacker Jarvis Jackson and that right there was a design run for Reggie ball they faked the ball into the right side and he pulls it down the left side almost like an option like you said Greg but very well disciplined play by the Georgia defense they weren't fooled at all there's nothing that Georgia Tech has done to this point that's caught this Georgia defense off guard. Third down and ten. Three wide receivers. Calvin Johnson stacked up top of your screen. Ball from the shotgun. He'll roll out. He'll pump once. Now throws on the run. Incomplete. And on the back of Calvin Johnson, get Paul Oliver some credit. He put the pads on him, and that ball came out. You've got to give Paul Oliver a lot of credit. He is Georgia's version of the shutdown corner. They're matching him up on Calvin Johnson whenever there's a one-on-one -on -one situation, and he's doing a super job. Calvin Johnson's got him by, geez, 30 pounds almost and four inches. But Paul Oliver is not backing down, showing he's not afraid to get up there and challenge him, and he's he's doing a super job right now. Mikey Henderson at his own 10 yard line Durant Brooks will try to tow it inside the 15 got it all yeah caught it too well you could hear that thud off his foot he got it all and now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete Brandon Sutherland the Georgia fullback. How about a 2.97 consumer economics Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating a thousand dollars to Georgia's general scholarship fund. Let's just let's just round that up to a 3.0 and I think we round it up give them the credit for the 3.0 that's a solid B average. I'm with you I like to round that up you know by the way seven touchdowns he's the first time since 1957 that a fullback has led the Bulldogs in scoring how about that. A loss of one as Lumpkin is tripped up back at the 19 yard line. You know, Sutherland doesn't get a lot of uh, accolades. He's out there pounding holes open for the likes of Lumpkin and Danny Ware. But give the props to that kid, a redshirt sophomore, 244 pounder. Yeah, you talk to the coaching staff for George. They say he is their secret weapon. He's obviously their leading scorer. 13 catches this year. For 130 yards, he's really used effectively in the in the in the red zone. That's what they like to really use him and exploit his matchup and his talents. Second like down, Rayleigh, the motion man. Stafford steps up and fires far sideline. Rayleigh, the man, he is bumped hard out of bounds into that Georgia Tech bench. And coming up on the Geico halftime report, Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, and our special guest, Archie Manning, will get you cut cut up to date on all the scores and highlights. 
Stay tuned. That's coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Hey, that, that Archie Manning, he's seen a little football. In oh, it today, I think he? he's got a couple of sons yeah. that have seen some football, too. They can throw it around the yard a little bit. Hey, Dad, you want to come out and throw? <laughs> I'd like to see that. Uh, they get it from him. First and ten. Under three minutes left in the first half. Quick hitter up the middle. Lumpkin, good run. Boy, he hit that hole in a hurry to the 39-yard line. That's exactly what I was going to say, Craig. That, that was an impressive run because you could tell that Lumpkin had made up his mind. He knew exactly where to hit that ball up in there. He trusted his line and his blocking scheme, and he pounded it up in there. Good, solid six-yard gain on first down. You surprised? This is low scoring. Both these clubs uh, over the 25-point mark per game. Well, again, it, it is a rivalry game. Yeah, they always play each other hard. They don't like each other. They know each other very well. And these defenses are both pretty solid as well. So it's going to be tough scoring today, it looks like. Play action again. Stafford goes over the middle. Incomplete. He threw it a double coverage, but Masqua, Masqua was wide open. A ball just a little bit underthrown. But Kenny Scott and DJ Jones we're back on coverage. You know, I don't know if it was so much underthrown. It was overled, I think, more than anything. Put it out in front of him a little bit too far, but I think it was put in the right spot. Massaqua just didn't have quite enough burst to get to it. But Matthew Stafford, he knew he was going to have a third and short coming up, third and four yards. Decided he wanted to take a shot up the field. He did not throw it in a position that it could be picked off. He wanted to try and stretch that defense a little bit, and I think he did a very good job of it. Georgia, five of eight in this game on third down conversions. They are looking at third down and three. The blitz come oh, right off the hands. Incomplete. Michael Moore, a sophomore, that ball on his hands. And again, we go back to turnovers and drop balls. That's two we've seen today. You know, they had the perfect play called again. You had Moore coming out in the flat. Matthew Stafford kept his composure, delivered a perfect pass. And, and, and Moore would have been able to turn it up, pick up another five or six yards. Easy third down conversion. But yes, the drops, that is a common theme this whole season. And it's been very frustrating for Coach Mike Rick and his staff because they're having the right plays called. They're just not completing it. Fourth down and four. Ely Kelso back to punt. Averaging 24.7. He's been pooching it most of the day. This time unloads. High hanger. Andrew Smith, the fair catch of the 25-yard line. Ball rushes out of the pocket, throws near sideline, and spinning out of a tackle is Calvin Johnson. That is a tough two-yard game by Calvin. I'll tell you, he, he's one of those guys that when he gets the football in his hands, and we saw him do it in, in several games. You've seen him do this kind of thing, but against... Uh, a lot of a lot of different teams you throw that easy pass out there to the flat to him you get the ball one on one on the outside he'll make the first guy miss and he's going to take it down the sideline against Virginia Tech he took a play like that took it 60 yards for a touchdown nobody's going to run him down from behind clock running Georgia Tech has three timeouts remaining if needed ball handoff choice well he grabbed by the waist and thrown down around the 38 yard line Mike Cox tried to pop him open, the fullback. You just get a feel that Georgia Tech, for whatever reason right now, they've got a, a, a much better understanding of what the Georgia Bulldogs are trying to do defensively, and they're running the ball very well. That's going to force them to make a decision, and if you give Calvin Johnson enough chances at one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to burn you sooner or later. Eleven seconds to play, and Jan Gailey let that clock run. They called timeout, and now punting with eleven seconds left in the first half. And it's the right call. You, you disassociate yourself from it emotionally as an offensive player. I want to go for it, but Georgia doesn't even have anybody back. They're making sure there's not a fake possibility. But Chan Gailey wouldn't let the clock run down if he was going to fake it. Brooks punts, high hanger. Takes a bounce, still alive at the 12-yard line as we tick it down to the end of the first half. Surprisingly low-scoring ball game here in Athens. That ends the first half. Georgia Tech will take a three-point lead into halftime. We now go to Tim Brando in our New York studio. Tim.
Georgia Tech leads Georgia by three at the half thanks to a 35-yard field goal by Travis Bell. Greg Bowler, Jack Steve Burline. These teams can't score. You a little surprised this has been a defensive ball game? I'm surprised because there's a lot of talent on the field offensively, but you got to give credit to both these defenses. They're playing very, very well. And we'll start by talking about the Georgia Tech defense. I mean, they have identified the, the problems, that they, the areas they think they can attack. They're trying to get pressure on Matthew Stafford. You can see he's made good decisions for the most part, but they've been able to get to him. Now, Georgia, Calvin Johnson has not been a factor. Trey Battle right there pounding James Johnson and Reggie Ball trying to run it a little bit has not been able to get that that game going the bottom line is both defenses are dominating right now as we look at our Dell halftime stats uh, yards tough to come by however Georgia 150 to 87 so far in this ball game yeah it, it, the stats all build themselves up to be the fact that the, there, there is defense being played on the field Calvin Johnson has not been a factor so far two catches 13 yards there's there's really only the only good thing that's been happening for Georgia Tech is that they got the running game going to short choice most of his yards coming from the second half uh, second half part of the second quarter on they're running the ball very well they seem to have their rhythm in the running game now maybe that'll open up some opportunities for Calvin Johnson up the field we'll see they have to find ways to get Calvin Johnson the football George on the other hand they've moved the ball very well they've just not cashed in on the opportunities they've not gotten the ball down into good field goal range they've not had a chance to get that it's also been a big factor field position we talked about how Georgia Tech has had the huge advantage field position wise we'll see if that can tip a little bit toward Georgia's favor last time Tech blinked Georgia in the first half 1995 it was a 14 nothing lead Bulldogs rallied to beat Georgia Tech in Atlanta 1817 third quarter underway Asher Allen at the five at the 20 makes a cut and nearly broke a tackle taken out of the 25 yard line or some emotions on that Georgia Tech sideline after that after that uh, takedown by Griffin for Georgia you know it's been a good solid first half it was for Matthew Stafford 7 of 15 couple of throwaways that hurts the stats a little bit but good smart decisions throwing the ball well Lumpkin they need to get him going they've got to get that running game going they had it going for a couple of series but Georgia Tech playing true to form not letting up a lot of yards to the running game although Danny Ware did gash a couple late in the first half. Play action pass as we open up the third quarter and is caught by Milner the tight end to the 36 yard line. They went early to Milner in the first half a couple of throws for 22 yards and Milner goes 11 on that completion. Well he is their leading receiver and I think it's a good way to attack the Georgia Tech defense. This defense again they blitz a lot. When they blitz linebackers, the tight end is the guy that's going to be able to find those holes over the middle of the field on the flats on the outside, the short, quick throws for the quarterback. Pitch. Lumpkin. Trying to let that offensive line spread it out a little bit. He'll pick up to 38-yard line. And a Y.E., the defensive tackle, number 96, with the tackle. Three-year letterman out of Pensacola. Had a great chat with this young guy. He comes from the re a wrestling family. And he talked about the advantage he has up on that uh, defensive line, about body lean and leverage. And there you look at his family. Liati Anawahi right there, his famous wrestling father. But yeah, the body lean, the leverage, he's got an advantage by growing up in that wrestling family, how to use his body and use... His opponent's body weight against him. And we asked about the hip toss. He says, I don't really toss, you know, too many guys around, but if I have to, I can use it. It's an advantage, and it was a, a bigger advantage for him when he came in at Georgia Tech. He was a little bit undersized, and he had to have some different way to, to make it make his presence felt to make a difference out there. Now he's grown into it. He's 280 pounds now. But he told us he tried to downplay initially the significance of this game because the ACC championship has been their big goal. But when we pressed him on, he finally said, all right, it's a huge game. It's about redemption. We need to win this ball game to leave with our heads up. Third down and six. Shotgun for Stafford. Let's the pressure come. Throws caught. Massacraw near the first down at the 47-yard line. Boy, that was a beautiful combo. Hit him right on stride. Good solid throw by Matthew Stafford. You get a good look at it here. Ball's going to be coming right at you. He stands in there, goes to the right guy coming across the field, picks up the first down. You now Matthew Stafford, he's got to be able to stand in there and take a shot once in a while. He took a couple on that play. 
And Philip Wheeler finishing him off there, number 41. Wheeler has been everywhere. K. Michael Hall, those two teams have, co have combined for 137 tackles and 11 sacks on the season. First and 10, Georgia down by three as we start the third quarter. Breaking one, breaking another tackle. Lumpkin rumbling into Georgia Tech territory. They'll mark him down at the 43 yard line. DJ Jones finally wrapped him up. And that was a really solid run to the right side. Lumpkin uses his speed to get to the outside. It looked like he might have had a chance for right there to get a hold of him and get him down, but he pulls through it, gets to the outside, and finishes it up. About a 10, 12 yard gain. A few of those, and that's going to make this George offense get down there in scoring range pretty quick. Ran right through the tackle of Gary Guyton. Another first down for the Bulldogs. Nearly three minutes into the opening quarter, flags are down as Lumpkin is tripped up just past the 40-yard line. And a Y.E. Got him around the shoe tops, and we'll see what the call is from Jack Childress. Offsides, Georgia Tech. Offsides, number 90 of the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Tomorrow on 60 Minutes, the testing of a new pill for the memory. The results could change millions of lives. It's a story you won't forget on 60 Minutes tomorrow. Memory. Memory. Well, I need to take that one. I'm with you. I am. <laughs> I'm right there in line. I've been hitting the head a few more times than you have, though. <laughs> First and five after the five-yard penalty marched off. Nearly a free play for Georgia. Watch out. Oh, the blitz came. Stafford tries to run out of it, but cannot escape Wheeler and Guyton. Yeah, you know, that, that's Philip Wheeler coming off the edge, and right here, and you got uh, Guyton coming up the middle. A lot of pressure getting to Matthew Stafford. They make a good hard play action fake, and you saw Wheeler actually looping all the way around the outside. And Matthew Stafford giving credit for fighting and trying to break out of it, but he was going uphill on that one, baby. Guyton and Wheeler were right there to make him pay the price. A loss of 11 yards, second down and 16. And again, the clock running as Georgia owned time of possession in the first half. From the shotgun, Stafford pressure again, throws it a flat. Oh, what an ankle tackle. Lumpkin goes down. Was that Anawaii? Yeah, Joe Anawaii did a great job staying home and buckled the knees of Lumpkin. You know, if it wasn't for Anawaii on this play, he did a good job sniffing this thing out. You're going to see him on the on the inside middle of your screen. He sniffed, see him running out there with those offensive linemen. If he's not there, you've got two on two, two blockers out front, and that's going to be a good solid game for the Georgia offense. But instead, Anawaii splits the double team right there, splits both those guys. Lumpkin doesn't have a chance. I would have liked to have seen one of those offensive linemen turn back and try and get in front of Anawaii because he obviously was the first threat not to be. Third down, 19 for Georgia. Stafford over the middle. Up top he goes. Deep, nearly intercepted. It was knocked down by Jaheed Ward Daniels. He wanted Matthew Stafford, that is, wanted A.J. Bryant. And he's been, he's been a little bit short on some of these long throws down that left side. I would have liked to have seen A.J. Bryant go up a little bit more assertively or aggressively for this football. Jahi Wheeler, he was the one that went up after Jahi Ward Daniels. He was the one that went up and made the play on that football. A.J. Bryant's lucky that he didn't come down with that ball. Ely Kelso, this will be his fifth punt, his longest of 36. Andrew Smith back to receive for Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech might be coming with a block here. Kick is away. Not long, but a high hanger and a fair catch at the 20-yard line by Andrew Smith. So no return off the 31-yard boot. Back to Athens after this. Let's take a look now at our Home Depot tools for success. Well, let's look at the tools that George has been doing to shut down Calvin Johnson. Right there you see double teams. Right there you see just pressure. No one for Reggie Ball to go. A few times that Georgia Tech has had one-on-one -on -one opportunities right there. You see Oliver going in there and making a play, breaking it up. 
they're challenging Calvin Johnson once in a while one on one usually he wins those battles today only two catches last year very similar stats two catches 14 yards last year today two catches 13 yards Georgia is doing a really good job of keeping him from being a factor at this point one of if not Steve Berline the most dangerous wide receiver in college football today I would say the most dangerous First and ten, Georgia Tech, they own a three-point lead. This drive starts at the 20-yard line. Crowd is up and noisy in Athens. Ball with the handoff. Oh, ho, ho. out of bounds goes to Shard Choice. Let's go back to New York for an update on Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Tim. All right, Craig, you think they're a little anxious in Texas right now? Here's Bobby Reed, two yards to Dewan Woods. Oklahoma State cuts it to six, under four minutes to play. A loss by Oklahoma and Texas would represent the Big 12 South. Craig. Tim, I, I agree with you. They are a little nervous in Texas. If Oklahoma wins, they take care of business, Steve. It's simple as that. They head to the Big 12 title game. Yeah, but, but they, they, it's not that easy for no. them right now. Obviously, Oklahoma State making a game out of it. Much more so than anybody thought. Second down, 11. Choice breaks one, a couple of tackles, and he'll be pulled down at the 27-yard line. And that's what Georgia Tech has to do. They've got to be able to run the football when Georgia decides they want to double up Calvin Johnson. When they roll the coverage to where they try and eliminate him from the passing game, the sharp choice and this running game for Georgia Tech have to make a pay. They did a good job right there. They've got themselves into a third and four. A good solid six yard pickup. Steve, he was so good last week. Choice only had to play a half in that win against Duke. Yeah. He picked up 118 yards through two quarters and then called it a day. This ain't Duke. Play action to roll out. The ball batted up and intercepted. Jarvis Jackson pulled it down. Quentin Moses, big number 94, got his hand up, and that ball popped up like a cork. And this is a big play because not only you get the turnover, but Georgia Tech, you'll see from Reggie Ball's view, he had James Johnson right there sitting on the sideline wide open over the top. That's who he was going to throw the ball to. Moses gets his big old paw up there and tips that ball up in the air. Jar Jarvis Jackson comes down with it. Moses knows. Big plays. He's given his offense good field position deep in Georgia Tech territory. So after the interception from the 24-yard line starts Georgia down by three. And the run play goes nowhere. Danny Ware is dropped for a loss of three back to the 28-yard line. And Joanna Wai right in there being a force defensively. You're going to see him in the middle of the screen right there busting through and just throwing Sutherland out of the way and getting a hold of that ball carrier and taking him down. You know, that's a great example of leverage. We talked about the wrestling background. Right there, he seems just to have his feet planted. He pushes some traffic by, and he is standing right there yep. to make the stop. There's definitely a lot of carryover between the two. Interior defensive line play, you've got to use your hand, you've got to know how to use your body. Under eight minutes of play, blitz, they set up the screen. Oh. It's hot, Ware has room. He has blockers at the 15, and he reaches out to the 10-yard line. How about the blocking? Nick Jones making his first consecutive start at center was out there blocking with his right, right guard Chester Adams. You know, you've got to give Jamal Lewis for Georgia Tech a lot of credit for making this tackle. You're going to see this could have been a touchdown. Georgia had to set up perfectly. Watch right there. He takes a shot on the ankle and still is able to knock Lumpkin out of bounds or, or way out of bounds. Danny Ware, excuse me. But the bottom line is if it wasn't for Lewis making that tackle on the sideline, he's out of the game now. He was hurt. That would have been a touchdown for Georgia. First and goal. The ball just inside the 10-yard line. Stafford sets up, tries to set up the screen and sidearms it to the flat incomplete. Incomplete. Al bring up second down and goal. Well, I like what the Georgia Bulldogs are doing offensively. That's a good way. You asked me earlier in the game, what's a good way to handle a blitz? Well, draw plays, trap plays, screen passes are three options right there. Georgia seems to be feeling pretty good about their screen game right now. It's about the fifth or sixth one they've run today. Right there again, though, the Georgia Tech defense sniffed it out. Nowhere to go with the football. Now, Georgia offensively 
very good in the red zone. 62 percent of the time they score touchdowns down here. You saw on the sideline Reggie Ball. It was just picked off for the 11th time. That ball was tipped and nearly intercepted and complete. Massaquah got a hand up. Dan and Kenny Scott was there as well. I'm sorry, Craig. Dangerous throw right there. Matthew Stafford, he was hot, so to speak. They came with a few more people than, than the Georgia offense could block. If you're going to make that quick hot throw, accuracy is a premium. You've got to hit him low, hit him in the chest. Don't get that ball up high because a tip ball down here in the red zone usually translates into an interception. Jan Gailey looking on. Third down and goal. Seven and a half minutes to play. Georgia down by three. Knocking on the door from the nine-yard line. Stafford's got to get the snap off. Down to two. Just got it away. He'll keep her. Stacked up. And on second ever, did get to the eight-yard line. But Michael Johnson, K. Michael Hall right there to well, slow down that offensive charge at Georgia. Talked about how good the Georgia offense is in the red zone. I didn't mention how good the Georgia Tech defense is in the red zone. Do a super job of swarming to the football. Did not give up the, the run to Matthew Stafford. They're only giving up 37% touchdowns down there. They won that battle. On the season, Ely Kelso, one of one. He had a 34-yarder against Auburn. This will be from 27. And he missed it. No good. Wow, this is a chip shot. I don't know what to blame this on. You know what, though, Craig? I was down on the field before the game. He was missing things to the left before the game as well. Back in Athens. First and 10 as Ball runs out. Hit once, then twice, and dropped back at the 25-yard line. And I'm impressed by this Georgia defense. Jarvis Jackson was the first contact right there on Reggie Ball. They have not let him get his running game going whatsoever and everybody that watches Georgia Tech knows how important he is to this offense he's got to be able to establish himself as an athlete as a running threat out there to open up other things up the field clock running 424 third quarter 15th ranked Georgia Tech up by three had a 35 yard field goal in the second quarter and that's been it and again the Bulldog defense swarming over the Yellow Jackets. No gain back at the 25, 26 yard line. Jarvis Jackson making the initial hit. And yeah. Jackson's had a marvelous game in the middle today for Georgia. He is flying around out there right now. He's fired up. That was a, another great hit. Of just dead solid on sharp choice. And you see, though, when he makes the play, there's a lot of guys lined up behind him ready to make the second hit and finish it off. Boy, a sea of red is on their feet here in Athens. 92,000 strong at Sanford Stadium. Dangerous play here. I think Georgia Tech should try and take a shot up top to Calvin Johnson, see if he can make a play for you. Reggie Ball, shotgun. He'll roll, he'll look, he'll tuck. In trouble. Drop at the 28-yard line. Fumble. Is it a lie? I don't see any call. Flags are out. Touchdown signal. Bedlam in Athens. Reggie Ball again 
he, he, he's got to be looking up the field a little bit more to try and make a play up the field when he starts scrambling. That ball pops out. It's on the ground. Now, I find it hard to believe. Well, it, look. Yeah, 13 you know just digs it out. Was yeah. that Tony Taylor? That's Tony Taylor. Tony Taylor Went out. And, and then he, there's the flag for excessive celebration. Yeah, well, he never was down. You can see, obviously, that he is reaching into the pile. The ball comes out, no doubt about that. And there's a shuffle and a scrum for that football. But Tony Taylor right there is not down ever. Oh, he just, he just reaches in and says, I got it. He's got a shovel in his hand Pulls and it digs it right out. You know what? They got the call right. I don't know about this diving into the end zone excessive celebration, but they definitely, they, this is a, a legitimate fumble recovery and a touchdown. Marcus Howard brought down Reggie Ball, and then, boy, look at that dig out. It's amazing to me that he had enough strength to get that ball out of there when everybody with all those bodies on top of him, he was able to wedge that ball out of there. And it's a touchdown. After further review, the call on the field has been confirmed. It is a touchdown. Tony Taylor. That is, that is bizarre. What a great play by Tony Taylor, but what can you say? I mean, prying that ball out of there and then taking it to the house. Bailey will try the extra point up and good. Tony Taylor goes 29 yards on the fumble recovery at Georgia. Leading Georgia Tech, 7-3. We'll be back. Georgia 7, Georgia Tech 3. Third quarter, 3-10 remaining. A bizarre turn of events as Tony Taylor picked up a, a fumble. It took a while to develop. I will say this, there was no whistle. Taylor went 29 yards for the touchdown. Give the officials credit for that part of it. They did not blow the whistle. That ball was obviously not, not recovered by anybody. They let the play develop and play itself out. Tony Taylor took advantage of it, but I do not agree with the call of the officials for that excessive celebration. That will have a toll on this here. They're, they're going to kick off now from the 20-yard line. Georgia Tech is going to get very good field position as a result of that 15-yard penalty. So from the 20-yard line, Georgia will kick away. Jamal Evans, the deep man, but actually he's up around the 15-yard line. Evans at the 14, at the 25, 30, right up the middle, stopped and stacked and dropped at the 32. No! Oh, he's still going! He was stopped and hit the motor! Stiff arm his way to the 435-yard line! He was knocked down twice, never taken to the turf, broke it, and nearly got into the end zone! What a, an individual effort by Jamal Evans! I mean, he is stopped cold by five different people, but kept those little legs going! Took it down the sideline, made an extra 30, 35 yards on the play. Giving Georgia Tech the ball to the 33-yard line. Oh, what a beautiful return. 53 yards. I had him buried in the pile twice. You and everybody in this stadium had him buried. It wasn't just you, my man. <laughs> what a third quarter. Reggie Ball goes back to work. Throws and completes. James Johnson, the intended receiver. I think we've got time now for the Aflac answer of the day. He was the only player to have his number retired at Georgia, but not be in the College Football Hall of Fame. The answer, we take you back to 1956 through 58, Theron Sapp, the man. Fullback. Number 40. I think on his right is Herschel Walker. Yep, might have heard of that guy. Second down and 10, 2.46 to play. Ball, the keeper, up the middle, inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Jeff Owens, number 95, brought him down. And we've seen some, a lot of football games in our day, but these, the last three minutes, 
interesting football. It's been, as you said, bizarre with a capital B, Craig. And th this, I think, falls squarely now on Reggie Ball. He's not played very well at this point. Granted, there has not been many opportunities, but he has had opportunities. He's had enough to where he should have made more big plays than he has. He had the, the very costly turnover there in the last series. He's got to make a play. Third down. Right up the middle. Choice 10. Five to the four-yard line. Trey Battle kept Choice out of the end zone. Super run by Tashar Choice and a great call, great execution by the Georgia Tech offensive line up front. Choice had open field, decides he wants to take on Trey Battle, and Trey Battle does a, a super job of getting him to the ground, holding off the, 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 the touchdown. If he wasn't there, definitely would have been a lot easier for Tashar Choice to get in. 107 yards rushing for Choice, the fifth straight game he's gone over 100. Ball on the keeper, runs into a pile of red jerseys. To the three yard line goes Reggie Ball. You got to be careful there. He took that option down the line and, and tucked it in there with three Georgia defenders. And I admire his linebacker mentality, as Coach Gailey calls it. Said he's a he's a linebacker's mentality as a quarterback. But you got to be smart too. You're going one man on three. Protect that football. Get down. You're not going to get through. You're not going to fight yourself into the end zone on that play. Reggie Ball, a senior from Stone, Stone Mountain, Georgia, 29 and 18 as a starter. Second down goal at the three-yard line. Ball hands off. Choice whistles and flags. Right when Georgia Tech made the snap. Looks like we might have some movement. They started before the snap. It would be uh, movement on the Georgia Tech side. Jack Childress. Dead ball foul. Ball start. 68 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. It's still second down. That's a Mansfield Rado, the right tackle, a three-year letterman out of Snellville, Georgia. And, and that's a huge penalty right there. Five yards down in the red zone to go from the two-yard line where the ball was to the seven-yard line. That is a huge difference. You're now no longer in your, uh, to the eight-yard line, actually. You're no longer in your goal line offense. Second penalty of the day on Georgia Tech, Steve. Only 10 yards marked off. You make a great point. That changes the game plan or the or the call play, the play call here, drastically. You're feeling pretty good. Second and go from the two. Now second and go from the seven. You've got work to do either way, but it's, it's a little different animal here. Ball has three on the play clock. He lifts and low, incomplete. Oh, Calvin Johnson was on the top rung of the ladder and nearly brought down a miracle grab. What can you say about Paul Oliver, number eight? One on one on the best receiver in, in I think, several years to come out of college football. This guy is, is an absolute beast. Six foot four, 235 pounds, and Paul Oliver Keeping his composure, not panicking, realizing he's got to bring that ball down, and he punches it out on the way down. Great body control, great eye-hand coordination by Paul Oliver to get that ball out. That was 6'5", Calvin Johnson going up six-footer, Paul Oliver. Ball up top, contact in the end zone, incomplete. I don't see a flag, and this crowd is crazy. And Calvin Johnson is heated. He's very upset that Reggie Ball did not give him a chance to catch that ball inbounds. He was coming out very upset. But you've got to give credit to Paul Oliver again. He's in perfect position. Calvin Johnson's tripping a little bit. But that ball pulls Calvin Johnson out of bounds. I don't know if he would have made the catch anyway. Oliver had inside position. And he's going up after that football. Give him credit. Travis Bell will attempt a 24-yard field goal. The kick is up and good. And Calvin Johnson is not used to anybody being able to cover him one-on-one. -on -one. Georgia 7, Georgia Tech 6. We'll be back. Georgia 7, Georgia Tech 6, 
That's the home of Uga Six. He weighs in at 55 pounds, just a little lighter than you, my friend. Craig Bullerjack, Steve Berline. How surprised are you with this football game? I am surprised. I'm not going to lie to you. I thought there'd be a little bit more offensive firepower. Georgia has 184 yards on the game. Georgia Tech 134 total yards on the game. It's amazing that there's not been more explosion offensively. Give credit to the defenses, though. Nothing up the middle. As Lumpkin has dropped for no gain. Well, surprise, I think, also just the bizarre plays we saw in the third quarter. I mean, nothing more bizarre than the Tony Taylor fumble recovery and the 29-yard return that followed. And then just as key, I believe, I mean, that touchdown, you, you can't account for something like that. A tremendous play on Tony Taylor's part, but they get the great field position on the kickoff return, and uh, Georgia's defense holds up. Georgia Tech can't capitalize on the field position. A loss of two actually on the play brings up second down at 12 as Stafford, the freshman, hangs in that pocket, throws. It's a low catch, grabbed by Rayleigh, still on his feet, tackled out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Tim, you are correct. As Lumpkin is taken down at the 30-yard line. As you look at key conference championship, of course, the SEC championship that you'll see here on CBS December 2nd, Arkansas and Florida in the ACC. Georgia Tech is headed to Jacksonville. Maryland or Wake Forest in the Big Ten or the Big 12 title game is... Uh, is now decided Nebraska and Oklahoma that Maryland Wake Forest game will be decided this evening and Timmy B knows that Nebraska and Oklahoma that is the old days that is they're different ball clubs now than they were back then but Nebraska and Oklahoma just like it used to be quick throw Rayleigh off his right hand incomplete stops the clock with 1341 to play Steve it's a, I'm gonna ask you this Chan Gailey on one side Mark Rick on the other. So do you play you play your game plan? You're up by one Georgia. You're down one Georgia Tech. You play more aggressively on the blitz package if you're if you're the Yellow Jackets, or do you play conservative on the offensive side if you're Georgia? Well, defensively, both these teams, what they've been doing has been working just fine. The offenses have been stymied all day. Offensively, if you're Georgia Tech, I think there's a little bit more urgency. You've got to score. You're down one. Georgia, you want to make sure you don't make a mistake. You'd love to get a little bit more point, a, little, a field goal or a touchdown, but you don't want to make that mistake. Hand off to Lumpkin. Stafford actually went out to try to throw a block for his tailback. And don't forget, later the game today, the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. The other factor with Georgia, too, you're dealing with a freshman quarterback who has played very well today. He's made good decisions. He's done nothing to, I think, lose any confidence from Mark Rick and from his offensive coordinator, Neil Calloway. But the fact of the matter is, this is a high-pressure situation where one mistake can determine the game. You've got to be careful what you ask him to do. Third down and nine. Massaqua goes in motion from the shotgun. Stafford floats out. Pressure from behind. Throws a dart. Oh, how about that coverage? He Ward Daniels, number 32, timed it, timed it beautifully. Tremendous play by Jahi Ward Daniels. He did time it just right. Receiver was not very open on that play, but Stafford giving him a chance, made a good throw. That was A.J. Bryant, but great coverage and a great break on the ball by Jahi Ward Daniels. The crowd may be thinking that maybe there was a little contact before the ball got there. I think it was just a good play. Sixth punt for Gordon Ely Kelso. Is long of 36. Back inside his own 20 yard line. Straight up. Straight down. Oh, it kicks back in favor of Georgia Tech. Elite Kelso has not had his A game today. He's had a couple of shanks. Timeout. 12 41 to play. It's time for our Geico scoring recap. It was scoreless after one. We go to the second quarter. Travis Bell, 35-yard field goal. Tech by three, and then the fumble. Tony Taylor digs it out of the pile. Where is he? There he is, 43. He's off to the races. Takes it back 29 yards. 7-3, Georgia. 
And then Bell connected from 24 yards out. And after three quarters, 7-6, the Georgia Bulldogs on top. Well, we knew it was going to be a hotly contested emotional game. Figured there'd be a little bit more offensive firepower. But, boy, there's been a lot to get excited about in this ball game. Both sides. You make a great point. Reggie Ball's the senior on this Georgia Tech football team. He's going to have to be the one that steps it up. And the stiff arm is to shard choice. Goes out of bounds at midfield at the 50-yard line. And you know, Reggie Ball, you talk about him. He is the senior. He's the quarterback. He's never beaten Georgia. And his teammates, all of them are counting on him to step up and, and make a play here at some point. You know, he's got a lot of help on that team. Deshard Choice has been running the ball well. Calvin Johnson is eager to make some plays. Reggie Ball is going to have to make a throw or play with his feet at some point in this ball game if they want to get in the end zone. And you have to think that throw will have to go to Calvin Johnson. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage right here. Ball instead tucks and runs, bounces off a of one tackler, and then pushes to the sideline and drops at the 43-yard line. And yes, that was a good play right there, but it's been a tough day for Reggie Ball. He is a quarterback in a linebacker's, or a linebacker's mentality in the quarterback, but he had that tip ball for an interception. He had the fumble. Both of those key plays for determining the outcome of this ball game. Obviously, that last one, a touchdown by Tony Taylor. But Reggie Ball has got to get out of that linebacker mentality here right now and just start thinking about what he's got to do to make plays to give his team a chance to win. First and 10. Choice. Oh, he laid out a hit, didn't he? To the 39-yard line. Athens, Georgia is the place, home of the Bulldogs. And Georgia has a one-point lead on their arch rival, the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech, 15th ranked in the country. We're in the fourth quarter, under 12 minutes to play. Second down. Play action ball. He wants the deep ball. He's got... Johnson threw his hands incomplete. But you know what, Craig? Calvin Johnson was open, and watch where this ball, if he dives for it and makes this catch, is he going to come down inbounds or is he going to come down out of bounds? Had he, he caught the ball out of bounds. He would have been out of bounds. No, he would have not established possession in the field of play. So you can say maybe he should have caught that ball. And I think seven or eight times out of ten, he'll pull that in, but he's going to land out of bounds, and it's not going to be a completed pass. Thrown to nine times a day, two receptions for 13 yards. Third down. Calvin Johnson gets the carry to the 30-yard line. First down, Tech keeps the drive alive. Well, that's a great job by Patrick Nix, the offensive coordinator for Georgia Tech. Just trying to get the ball. Here's Calvin Johnson right here. He's going to come around with the reverse that way. All the run action. Good time for this call. Get the ball in your best playmaker's hands. Get some blockers out in front of him. Let him run over somebody and pick up that first down. Good timing for that call. A little flip by choice. And Johnson with 4-3 breakaway speed. He goes to 35, and you're right. He can break... He can break a couple of tackles along the way. Choice right up the middle. Squeezes the yardage to the 21. And you saw Marcus Howard, number 38 for Georgia, make the tackle on that play. And the reason that play works, there's a little bit of hesitation on, George, uh, on the defensive end's part because he knows that Reggie Ball can pull that ball out of there at the last second, take it around the end. That's what keeps him honest from crashing down on that play and making the tackle at the line of scrimmage. That's why it's in there. Reggie Ball, they know if he gets to the edge, he's going to be dangerous. You've got to respect that. And Choice has now carried the ball 20 times for 126 yards. He'll get one more carry. Breaks a tackle inside the 15 to the 14. Tony Taylor wrapped him up around the knees. So over 130 yards now for Tashard Choice. And there you, sh you saw... Quentin Moses, the defensive end on that side, same situation. He's got contained. 
that ball action, that run action, he can't cave down on it because he knows that Reggie Ball might be reading him and might pull that ball out, take it around the edge. That's what gives him the lane to run the football up in there. Calvin Johnson lines up near side. Single coverage. Tech will stay on the ground. Oh, what a run. Spinning out of a tackle is choice to the 10 yard line. And that was a super job by Tashar Choice. Keelan Johnson came up and made the hit. Would have been a no gain or maybe a yard gain, but Tashar Choice saw the contact coming, spun away from it, and used it to actually propel him forward for a four yard gain. Choice already over his season averages of carries and yards. He came in with 20 carries a game, 96 yards. Already over 130, flirting with 140. This is the ninth play of this drive. Second down, six from the 10 yard line. Choice gets the call, rumbles, hits Tager, touchdown, Georgia Tech. Tashard Choice. That was a power drive by Georgia Tech. There was not one completed pass on that whole drive. Big run by Calvin Johnson to pick up the first down on the third and eight. But Tashard Choice gets the credit for that one. He finished off that drive in true workhorse style. He's exhausted right now. Look at him. He's bending over, gasping for air, but he is a gamer. Did not want to have anybody else with the responsibility of getting that ball in the end zone. Georgia Tech now going for two to try and go up by seven. Chan Gailey will go for two. Ball the keeper and he slipped at the three. Tony Taylor, he tried to make a cut around Taylor and Tony Taylor with the tackle. 12-7 our score, 8.50 to play. Tassard's choice just powers his way in for the touchdown. Tech goes for two. Ball on the keeper. He slips and falls at the three. Tech leads by five. Georgia Tech, 12, Georgia 7. Nine plays, 56 yards, just under four minutes off the clock. And Tassard choice with a powerful 10-yard touchdown. He had six carries on that drive, Steve, for 39 yards. And he was hurt, and he was gasping for air, but I, I gained a lot of respect watching him right there. And I'll tell you what, when you reach pay, pay dirt like he did right there, it makes it all worth it. Travis Bell will kick away from the 35. Asher Allen at the four. Allen at the 15, 20. Cut, still on his feet, 25. High steps out of a tackle at the 30. And spins and is dropped at the 36-yard line. Electrifying return by Asher Allen. So 8.34 to play. And Georgia Tech leads on the road, 12-7, over the Bulldogs of Georgia. You're looking at the current BCS standings in college football. They will change after this weekend's play and see if any chance Ohio State, Michigan uh, sees one another. USC just kind of waiting around. USC and Notre Dame, those two teams are playing today. And actually this evening, the winner of that game, if it's USC, I think they got a legitimate, you know, a legitimate claim to the national championship game. But Notre Dame, if Notre Dame wins, as much as I want to say they deserve it, they lost to Michigan at home. I think it'd be hard to full, throw them ahead of Michigan. Florida, now, if they win the SEC championship game next week, they've got to be in the mix, too. Georgia comes out flowing. Kenneth Harris makes the grab. And a first down at the 50-yard line. So the Bulldogs down five with a first down at midfield. Boy, Matthew Stafford, maybe the best throw of the game. That was on the money. It was a rope right on the money. And we're seeing a different attitude now, I think, because they've got, they're now trailing by four. 
Mark Rick knows his freshman quarterback has got to grow up here. He's got to make a few plays. 13 of 26, 150 yards now for Matthew Stafford. He'll line up shotgun on first down. One pump, throws, sideline. It's caught. He turns back in, and that's Massaqua. Mohammed Massaqua out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Another good, quick decision. We saw a little bit of athletic ability there in Matthew Stafford. He, he started to cock it one time and pulled it back and was still able to get it out there, strike on the money with some zip on it. Hit Massaqua right in the number one. Couldn't have put it in a better spot. How about moving the football? Two passes, two first downs. Yep. Now at the Georgia Tech 40 yard line, trailing by five. Halfway through the fourth quarter. On the ground, big hole, still on his feet, Danny Ware. To the 25 yard line. Another first down for Georgia. Wrap up all of today's action tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern with SEC Football Nation on CS TV, the 24 hour college sports network from CBS Sports. You know, Danny Ware has been the one really doing the damage for Georgia offensively running the ball today. 30 yards on five carries. He's the one that's been able to rip off the five plus yards. First and 10. Rayleigh in motion. Once again, Ware bouncing tackles to the 21 yard line. And I think it's a good decision by Mark Rick to go with Danny Ware right now. Greg, Greg Lumpkin, we know how good he's been all year for Georgia. He's been a very consistent runner for him. But today, for whatever reason, this Georgia Tech defense is having a hard time figuring out Danny Ware. And Mark Rick is going to keep pounding him up in there until they show they can figure him out and get him down. Well, Lumpkin's carried 17 times for 48 yards. Ware, sixth carry for 36. That's six yards a hit. Ware the tailback on second down and five. Again, Ware cuts back, leans. Ware will be short of the first down at about the 16, 16 and a half yard line. But another good, solid three plus yard run right there. Puts him in a third and just over to long, call it a long two. You hate to har I don't want to keep harping on it, but that is a lot different on Matthew Stafford and on the play calling for Neil Calloway than a third and eight or nine in this situation with a freshman quarterback. Stafford, you see him hand signaling from behind. Oh, hard running. Ware leads to the 15 yard line. It will be close. They're probably going to measure, but I think that second effort by Danny Ware on that play got the first down. Tremendous individual effort running the football right here by Danny Ware. First down. You know, the nose of the ball is on the line, and that's where the sticks are. That is exactly where so they're So move at. the chains. It'll be first and 10 from the 15-yard line. And the clock now running close to five minutes left in the fourth quarter. Georgia has won five straight over Georgia Tech. Trying to make it six in a row. If they do, they'll have to come back. Down by five. A yard to the 14. I think somewhere along this drive, we're in the red zone. Dangerous situation. They need a touchdown, though. Georgia needs a touchdown to get back in the front. They're Danny Ware limping off the field. Nice to know you got Craig Lumpkin there to step in for him. But I think Matthew Stafford's going to have to make a play in the air here, either on second or third down at this point. Second down and nine. The freshman lines up in shotgun. Six on the play clock. Down to five, down to four, three. Got it off with two to play with. They'll hand it. Big hole right side. Lumpkin. Good pursuit by the Yellow Jackets to close it down at the 11-yard line. Daryl Robertson from that left defensive end spot rode him down. Now, Georgia is definitely in four-down territory here. There's four minutes left in the game. They could look at it from the standpoint of, well, we don't have to put it on the freshman and throw the football here if we think we can get it to a fourth and short. 
by running the ball right now. So they've got choices to make. They've already talked about it. They know exactly what their plan is right here. Ninth play of this drive. Five minutes of clock they have chewed. Third down and six. Shotgun. Stafford throws a dart complete inside the five-yard line to Muhammad Massaqua. Philip Wheeler delivered the blow, but get credit to Massaqua who, who spun off and got another yard or two to the four-yard line. You got to give credit to Matthew Stafford for standing in there making a strong throw under pressure with the game on the line. And Jamal Lewis and Philip Wheeler were right there to make the make the big hit on Massaqua and give him credit for being a tough little guy out there standing there taking a hit and getting a big first down. Danny Ware has returned to the Georgia backfield first and goal at the four yard line where the ball carrier or the hole was wide open Tech closed it no gain second down and goal and somebody's got to be talking about this in the Georgia Tech huddle right now Georgia needs a touchdown. Let's not give it away here. Let's just fight for it. Make sure that they earn this touchdown. Great job by Philip Wheeler right there, being there to shut the hole off. You had Jahi Ward Daniels right there making the first contact. This is a big stand for a very good Georgia Tech defense. Field goal won't do much. Under three minutes to play. Second down and goal into the middle of that Georgia Tech defensive front and where is knocked down and Hawaii you will not move Big Joe out of the middle and you learn a lot about people in situations like this you know George has been running the ball down their throat here pretty much on this drive Danny Ware has been doing a great job the old line coming off the ball but Georgia Tech they've got something there's some presence in that huddle that's telling these guys don't lay down here do not give in. We got to keep them from scoring a touchdown, and we win this ball game. 12 play of this drive, four wide receivers set, and the freshman goes under center. Stafford on third down and goal. Three-step drop, one pump, a little flip, end zone, touchdown, Massaquah! From Dallas did he give it to you he was brilliant on that play that was a designed pump fake trying to get the Georgia Tech safety to step up on the short fake and right over the top Massaquad did a good job being patient with his route Georgia's gonna go for two here to try and get up by a field goal on Georgia Tech but brilliant execution by Matthew Stafford and Muhammad Massaqua on the biggest play of the year for the Georgia Bulldogs. Second touchdown catch of the season for Massaqua, the sophomore from Charlotte, and here we go. Two-point conversion. Stafford rolls, fires. Massaqua. Go to the well once, go to the well twice. Gotta love it. This uh, this freshman has been finding a way to grow up the last couple of weeks. Stafford, one punt, and he finds Massaqua. And Georgia leads Georgia Tech by three. 145 to play in Athens. And then the two-point conversion. Massaqua. Georgia lead by three. Toyota presents Heroes of the Fall. In 1978, Georgia and Georgia Tech, Coach Dooley said, freshman quarterback, get on in the game. See if you can help us win this thing. I said, Coach, let me go find the helmet first, and then we'll get to business. As I remember, I hadn't played in three or four games. Didn't expect to play against Georgia Tech that day. We struggled out of the gate. They got the big lead. We were down and had to throw the ball, so we sort of cut it loose a little bit, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, 
the first time I was uh, on the big stage, you know, the team looking at me to, to help them pull out a victory. And, you know, my family was there. It was a really big day as I look back on it. One of those special memories that I'll always treasure. Toyota, moving forward. 15 to 12, our score, Georgia. Retaking the lead, 12 plays, they go 64 yards. Over seven minutes off the fourth quarter clock. The drive started back on the 35-yard line. That was impressive, to say the least. Timeouts remaining, and the one on your far left, the, the most probably important with Tech, down three, a minute 45 to play. They have all three timeouts remaining. And something tells me that number 21, Calvin Johnson, is going to come into play on this drive with a minute 45 left to go. Reggie Ball's got to give him a chance to make some plays. Stay tuned for the TIAA Kreft College Football Today postgame show, time permitting here on CBS. There we go, a minute 45 to play, 15-12 Georgia. Mims kicks away. It's short. Evans at the 11. Stutter step, stacked and driven back. One thirty-six to play. Georgia Tech needs a field goal to tie. A touchdown breaks a drought of five straight losses to Georgia. Well, let's look at that touchdown real quick. Watch the safety right here. He's the one that bites on the initial fake right there. Boom, he steps up over the top. Massaqua was there. Great execution. Ball throws. Caught. Oh, out of bounds. It's incomplete. What a hit delivered by Johnson, the free safety. That's Keelan Johnson, number 30, coming over. It's the second time James Johnson has not pulled in that same pass, and he's paid the price. My mentality is holding on Georgia Tech. As we tell them, my mentality is, hey, if you're going to take the hit anyway, you might as well catch the football. Twice James Johnson today has had a shot up the seam on the sideline and has not come in with the football. Here's Jack Childress. 64 of the offense. That penalty is refused. Second down. Andrew Gardner, second down as Georgia refuses the penalty. I'm surprised by refusing the penalty. I think you'd rather have him first and 20 backed up in their own end zone than second and 10. Three timeouts remaining for Tech. Reggie Ball throws far sideline, caught out of bounds, goes Chris Dunlap. And Chris Dunlap, he's a senior. He knows enough to where he should have known exactly where he was on that field. There was no reason for him to catch that ball and step out of bounds. They need first downs. He's two yards short of the first down. He's got to catch that ball, run straight up the sideline, get the first down, then get out of bounds. There was no reason for him to turn and step out of bounds there. Third down and two. Shotgun, pedals, pressure. Sack at the 15. And that is why Chris Dunlap should have taken that ball and gotten the first down. They wouldn't be looking at fourth and 12 now. Great play, great penetration. You had Clinton Moses right there. Charles Johnson. I think Ray Gant was in there. Timeout. Georgia Tech with 105 to play. Fifteen twelve Georgia. Two timeouts left for Tech. And just a moment ago, there is a contact in the personal foul. You're gonna see after the play, watch when everybody stops at the top of your screen. They're still moving right to the head of the Georgia Tech. Boom, right there. That blow to the head is what the personal foul was called on. That is a classic example of a player losing composure, losing his poise, not understanding the magnitude of the situation. That gives Georgia Tech new life. A huge play in this ballgame. Well, instead of going for it on fourth down, you mentioned new life for Georgia Tech. Down by three in the football, 106 to play. Ball up top. Intercepted. Paul Oliver. Third pick of the year. And listen to this crowd. Well, you talk about how you got to give you
your man Calvin Johnson a chance to make a play but this is not the time first and ten in this situation with obvious coverage not a good throw not a good choice by Reggie Ball I would have loved to have seen him come off be more patient know you've got over a minute left you've got timeouts left don't try and force it when it's not there on first down when you've got more plays to go and Georgia obviously celebrating the fact that Reggie Ball tried to force that ball in there that's one that he knows he'd love to have back if you're going to throw that to Calvin Johnson throw it where only he has a chance to make the catch second interception thrown today by Reggie Ball Oliver with his third interception and he's down at the 45 yard line and he's up probably cramped but Paul Oliver what a game he has had everywhere I mean, gee. Georgia Tech will use the timeout with 101 to play. Let's check in our Ruby Tuesday player of the game. Well, what can you say about this freshman, Matthew Stafford, 16 to 29, 171 yards, a touchdown, but the big number right there. No interceptions. The last two games, zero interceptions against Auburn, against Georgia Tech. What does it translate to? Wins of this Georgia offense or this Georgia Bulldog football team. Now it's time for the five star play of the game presented by Wrangler. Well, the five star play of the game, you've got to go with the fumble recovery by Tony Taylor. Reggie Ball trying to tuck it up, get some yards. The ball comes out. Nobody gets possession. Tony Taylor digs in there, pulls it out goes for the touchdown to put Georgia up for the first time that is the play of the game the Wrangler five star player of the game I'll tell you what play of the game excuse me another player that deserves credit though is the man that picked off that last pass Paul Oliver who's been one on one on Calvin Johnson most of the day and he's done a tremendous job shutting him down Calvin Johnson with only two catches 13 yards on the ball game what a tremendous job by Oliver. So now Georgia sitting on a three point lead will take a knee. And Georgia Tech's got to wonder what they have to do to get a win over this Georgia Bulldog, Bulldog team. It's their sixth straight loss. Georgia Tech will burn their final timeout. And Chan Gailey looks on the senior class will walk off this field knowing they never, never threw Georgia a loss during their four years. The last time Georgia Tech won was actually here in Athens on November 18th of 2000. And you see what it means that this Georgia Tech team wanted to win this game so badly for bragging rights, for pride. This senior class, you talk about how the Georgia seniors have never lost to Georgia Tech. They leave here knowing they've got bragging rights for life. The senior class for Georgia Tech, they've accomplished so much. They're a legitimate top 20 football team. They've had a tremendous year, but to end their senior year with a loss to Georgia, even though they've got the ACC championship ahead of them, even though they've got a bowl game ahead of them, they never beat Georgia. That's going to be a hard pill to swallow. How will this win over a ranked team help Georgia in the bowl picture? It's going to help. It'll solidify them. We we were talking about it before the game. It might make them a, a solid choice for the Peach Bowl. Uh, I think that'd be the one that would make the most sense. I'm more concerned about how it's going to affect Georgia Tech. This is a crushing loss. They're going to go in that ACC championship game next week coming off this physical disappointing loss against Georgia it's going to be a challenge to see if they can bounce back another knee for Stafford Tech cannot stop the clock Let's go get it. and you see some frustrations out there in the field it's been a very classy ball game both sides but there are definite frustrations on the Georgia Tech side of things Georgia will have to run one more play Mark Rick will secure his 60th win as head coach of Georgia today. And who would have thought 
Three weeks ago, this Georgia team was down in the dumps. They come back and destroy Auburn and beat Georgia Tech. They can come off this field with their heads high. Six seconds, the final seconds ticking down. Six straight for Georgia. For Steve Burmine, Craig Bullerjack saying so long from Athens with a final score. Georgia 15, Georgia Tech 12. Tonight on CBS, it's Criminal Minds, CSI, and 48 Hours Mystery. We'll send it to New York and Tim Brando with a TIAA Crep College Football today. After these messages, this has been a presentation of CBS Sports.